Hey guys. Yes, but as a known scientist, it would be surprising if the girl blinded me with something. Three papers a week. Almost every day. Per year? Well, I think I should be reading them two to three a day, but I usually get about two or three a week. Every day. So. Too often? <laughs> um, <coughs> it depends on what class I'm taking, but probably around uh, ten. Every day. Every day. Um, no. <laughs> While I'm reading it, I'll take little short notes, shorthand notes on the side just to remind me about what I'm reading. I didn't do it instinctively, uh, but I read much more slowly. I take notes on it, try to follow up how they're doing it. And also, I have to, I'm usually near a computer because I'm always looking up stuff that I don't understand. Well, like, with books, I'll just read them straight from journal articles. I'll just, I mostly highlight like, what I don't understand, so I think, well, I'll look it up. Uh, yes, I look at the title and I really go in depth with the title to see what I would expect and then I do the same thing for the abstract. Um, yeah, usually for I would read the abstract um, to kind of get a taste for what I'm getting into and then generally I'd skim over the article and uh, really look into the results and conclusions if I understand them. Is there is that two kinds of journal papers? The first one is that you just read the title, you feel disgusted, you cannot read it anymore. <laughs> the second one, you just read the first sentence, you feel disgusted, then you cannot read it anymore. I, I don't read it straight through normally. Um, I'll read the introduction and the results section and then stop. I read the abstract and often then I simply look at the data figures and read the discussion, particularly the last two paragraphs of the discussion. Definitely the abstract because it gives you a good summary of what's going on. Abstract, and I will read the introduction. Usually I skip the method. Uh, the abstract, obviously. Results, abstract, and discussion. Um, results, generally. Um, introduction is important if I don't know the background. Oh, also, something that's important is looking at the references. The data, which I find both in the figures in the article as well as in the the abstract. But the introduction is, is very important because they're also giving you context for their uh, for their discoveries. Definitely not. Uh, but it depends. No, I'd rather not read those. But also, like, I did not have the, enough background information to understand mm -hmm. what the heck they were going. Okay. I really don't like reading in general. <laughs> um, it depends on the topic, not particularly. <laughs> that depends. Um, sometimes, if they are well written and if they're uh, applicable to what I'm doing, or just just plain interesting, then yes. I do because I get to sound intelligent in front of uh, my PI. I don't read journal articles random. I do actually, and I, I wish that's something that I would have more time to do. It does not beat Harry Potter. <laughs> so you, the first thing you need to really do is you have to take a large step back and you have to say, what are the one or two or three things this paper is about? And to um, ask yourself first, what's the question that's being asked? And then how is that answer going to be provided in terms of a methodology? And then what is the answer? And the details don't matter, right? There's a sea of details. The details are, are, at the first level, at least not important to understanding what's the question, how is the question addressed, and what's the answer. And then once you get through those three things, then you can start to go back and say, well, does the answer really depend on this or that detail? Um, because at the big level, it, it doesn't, right? But at another finer level, it, it might. First, read the title and see if it has meaning for them word for word, and then read the abstract very carefully. Um, 
And then, uh, after trying to parse out what the abstract has told them, begin to take on selected figures. So that's a way of introducing students to the articles without them becoming overwhelmed. But I think that forming a very, um, both detailed and also really creative list of expectations of that paper um, makes you first just better prepared to tackle that one paper. So if you have a list of what you think that paper should be about, you can then read the paper and see how well your list and the paper match and where there's discrepancies. It may be that you were incorrect in your expectations or it might be that the paper wasn't really doing everything that you thought it should have been. So the paper's lacking in some way. I think that the most important thing for a student, because they're not as adept at um, interpreting figures directly, but they need to look at the figure after they read the words in the text. So you read the words in the text and you see, oh, this is what the authors interpret those data. Can I see their interpretation? Do I agree with the interpretation or do I come up with a different one on my own? I don't believe it! That she goes